My name is Valdo Koha. In the, the better part of my adult life, I have dealt with the topic of organization. 25 years in the business world, working in very large organizations like Siemens and in small startup companies. In the last 15 years, I served full-time in the ministry as elder, as teacher, and I helped build two mission societies. I believe we, the ICOC movement, are at the crossroads. I am convinced we need to organize differently from what we have done in the last 10 years. We need a new, effective, global organization. I would like to speak for a few minutes to the why and the what, and not or not yet to the how. And I would like to begin with two questions. The first one is, do we want to be a global movement? I think we do, but we have to affirm that. The second question, does a global movement need a global organization? Organizations do not exist for their own sake. They are means to achieve a purpose. At the end, an organization is a body of people with a particular purpose. Organization and movement are tightly coupled concepts. By definition, you cannot have a movement without some kind of organization. Our movement, the International Churches of Christ, was founded with a rigid global organization. And God used it to his glory, at least initially. We hit the wall and established what I would consider a much needed interim organization that kept us alive and together as a movement. Here is the question. If we would start today from scratch, if we would start today with a clean slate, how would we organize? My first proposition, the purpose of the movement defines the organization. The goal is to establish the ideal organization. Therefore, we must consider how our organization would look like if we would start from scratch. Now, let me establish an important foundational principle. I call it organizational physics. We all agree that the Bible is not a book of physics. The Bible does not speak to physical laws like gravity or thermodynamics. And yet, you and I better not ignore the laws of physics. God equipped human beings with the ability to understand and pay attention, even if only intuitively, to the main laws of physics. The Bible is also not a book on organizational theory. It does describe some leadership principles, such as the role of elders, teachers, and evangelists, or the importance of character for leadership. However, it does not tell us how we should organize our churches or our families of churches. Like physics, organizations follow laws that we must pay attention to if we don't want to suffer undesirable consequences. I believe God expects us to use our brains and experiences to organize well. Like the laws of physics, the laws of organization have been discovered over time. In the last hundred years, there has been a huge progress in the area of organizational theory, largely motivated by the desire to build successful global enterprises. Like in the sciences, there have been pioneers and path-breaking thinkers that developed theories that are established and in broad use by anyone who builds organizations. For example, one of the key contributors was Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker, who died in 2005, was an Austrian-born American management consultant, educator, and author. Drucker's writings contributed to the philosophical and practical foundations of modern cooperation. Peter Drucker's writings are textbooks on organizational theory. They are today widely read by builders of all kinds of organizations. Peter Drucker analyzed many business and nonprofit organizations, including churches. For example, he thought that the Salvation Army was by far the most effective organization in the U.S. In Drucker's opinion, no one even comes close to it in respect to clarity of mission, ability to innovate, measurable results, 
dedication and putting money to maximum use. This is just an example for the fact that the quality of organization can be well measured. This means that organization follows some underlying basic principles. Now I often hear the question, what does corporate America and God's kingdom have in common? Here is my second proposition. There is clearly a difference between the kingdom of God on this earth and the corporate world. However, all organizations inside and outside the kingdom of God follow laws and principles that need to be paid attention to. Now, what are some of those key elements of an effective global organization? I want to tell you a quick story. It's a very old story, a Chinese story of three freestone masons who were asked what they, are, what they were doing. One said, don't you see, I'm chipping stones. The other said, I'm making building blocks. The third said, I'm building a cathedral. This little story tells us many things. One of them is that an organization needs a mission and division. Proverbs 29.18 says, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. An effective global organization has a global purpose or mission that is expressed with a goal or a vision. And the law by Peter Drucker states, single purpose organizations tend to be the most effective. The restoration movement began with the vision of unity among all the Christians with the purpose of being more effective in converting souls. The ICOC movement began with the mission to evangelize the world in our generation. A completely evangelized world was the vision. Now we should not come up ourselves with mission and vision. Our mission and vision is given to us by God. And it is true. God wants us to evangelize the world and glorify His name by obeying His commands. To say it in different words, God wants all men to be saved by those who follow the Bible and life and doctrine. So the question is, is this our mission? Is this our vision? You know, I'm teaching restoration history at the New England School of Missions. A couple of uh, weeks ago, we were in class, 25 to 30 students, 20 plus years old, the next generation of leaders in our movement. I asked them the question, What's the mission, what's the vision of the ICOC family of churches? What is it? What is our purpose? There was silence. Then somebody in the background mumbled something about the Bible. And then one of the, one of the brothers said, You, the old people, need to tell us. You need to tell us what our vision, what our mission is. And that brings us to the second key element of an effective organization. An effective global organization needs to communicate its global message effectively to its members in a way that it makes it personal. We need to communicate a mission and a vision that shapes the identity of each disciple. The global message of evangelizing the world in our generation translated to me as an individual disciple in two ways. Number one, it told me that I'm something much, that I'm part of something much bigger than my own life or my church. Number two, it told me that I will do anything, go anywhere, give up everything for this great cause. The third key element of an effective global organization is a structure. The structure of an effective global organization serves the purpose of the organization. Structure is a tool for accomplishing the mission of the organization. Alternate structures can be used to achieve the mission, but badly designed structures will hinder the performance of the organization as a whole. The two resources that are 
common to all effective organizations that need to be addressed in the structure are number one, key people, and number two, money. And here is my third proposition. We need an effective global organization with number one, a compelling God-given mission and vision. Number two, that is communicated effectively to all disciples around the world. And number three, a structure to manage key people and money in order to achieve the purpose of our movement. Let me conclude. For some of us, the talk of a global organization generates feelings. Maybe feelings of fears and hurts, maybe feelings of frustration and discouragement. Often such feelings have to do with our experiences from the past. I would like to encourage us not to be motivated by feelings but by faith. As Paul said, brothers, I do not consider myself yet have to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And to God be the glory. Amen.